Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this episode of Race Face Driver Updates here on Racing America. In today's episode, we have nine drivers that saw action over the weekend, including NASCAR Xfinity at the Paperclip, one driver making their debut in the NASCAR Truck Series, Cars Tour at Greensville Pick and Speedway, Late Model Racing in the Northwest, Bando and Legend Cars at Crisp, and quarter midget racing at North Carolina, and a couple of race face drivers getting dirty with NASCAR stars at Millbridge. Now that's a lot of racing, so let's get right to the results. Anthony Alfredo and Sheldon Creed were at the famous paperclip, Martinsville Speedway, for the call 811 before you dig 250, in what ended up to be a wild race to say the least. Before we get to the results, Anthony Alfredo took us for a lap around the half mile paperclip in this week's track lap with Fast Pasta. Hey everybody, Anthony Alfredo here. I'm going to take you for a few laps around Martinsville Speedway before we race here this Friday night in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. And I'm in my number 23 Chevrolet Camaro in my SimSeats driving simulator. SimSeats will actually be on my car this weekend, so we're going from Sim to reality, which is awesome. But we call this track the paper clip because it's got these long straightaways and really sharp corners. And you can see there's a curb on the inside, so you want to wrap that really tight. That's where the most grip is. But there's also a transition, as you see, from pavement to concrete in the corners. So there's a difference in grip level and actually a little bit of a bump as you cross that transition. So you gotta be mindful of that while on the brakes. But you see how tight we can wrap the curb, carry a lot of roll speed, be smooth on the throttle because there's not very much banking here to hold you. You can arc it out a little bit to get through the center better, which is critical because how sharp it is. So most of the speed is made with your momentum. So you see how one of the cars crashed because it is that difficult to get off the corner here. Uh, and you do have that transition from concrete to asphalt pavement on exit as well. But it's a lot of fun. It's very tight, so it does get chaotic at times because there's not a lot of places to go when there's a big crash. So we see the field stack up a lot. It's pretty important just to take care of your car here so that you have a nice piece to race with at the end. But you just got to survive and have a shot at it when it matters most on the last lap. Looking forward to racing here, and I hope you're all looking forward to watching the races. Now that's a short track. Let's now check in on the duo for the race results. This week we start with Anthony Alfredo who had sim seats back on his number 23, our Motorsports Camaro. Anthony qualified 16th, ran in the top 10, and scored some bonus points in stage one. Enough for me, let's check in with Anthony for his take on the event. Well, finished 14th here at Martinsville Speedway. Not exactly what we wanted, but we ran inside the top 10 for quite a while, scored stage points, and had another solid race. It got quite chaotic there at the end, but we're able to, to finish decent and salvage something, kind of stay out of some of the trouble, and uh, get ready for off weekend to kind of regroup, reset, and get ready to head to Talladega in a couple weeks. Thank you all. The Xfinity Series enjoys a much-deserved weekend off before they head to Talladega Super Speedway on April 23rd. Sheldon Creed qualified his number two Whelan Richard Childress Chevrolet in the fifth position and had a solid race until a faulty alternator caused the battery to fail. Let's get Sheldon's take on the race. Plus, he slung some dirt with some of his NASCAR buddies at Millbridge Speedway in his micro sprint. Hey, what's going on guys? Um, had a lot better day going at least uh, for Martinsville. Um, car was much better. Did a lot of things I liked. Um, struggled a little bit with, with turn late center and then drive off mostly, but um, yeah, struggled a little bit there, but, but really having a good run. Um, had an alternator going bad there. Uh, so wasn't able to run fans like the last, I don't know, 100, 150 laps. Um, and then eventually the battery died um, right in front of Ryan Sieg actually on a restart. So 
uh, bunched those guys up behind us. Didn't mean to, obviously, just um, didn't know it was gonna die then. So, bummer for sure, and, and went two laps down putting a battery in it, but uh, happy with the speed we had for Martinsville. Rams had the top 10 most of the day, and uh, yeah, it always makes the day a lot funner, and um, and having a lot of fun with the micro sprint lately uh, out of Millbridge on Wednesday nights. Run fifth this week to you know, Larson Bell, a little Brent Cruz, pretty quick, uh, and Jesse Love. So getting better out there, getting my car better. Um, and there's like 36 cars showing up on Wednesday nights out there. So uh, a lot of competition, but um, yeah, just trying to have fun with it, keep it fun. Um, and uh, we'll keep working hard on the Xfinity program. Up next for Sheldon, Talladega Super Speedway, where he has had a lot of success. We're going to take a quick break, and when we come back, we'll check in on Caden Honeycutt's double duty weekend, including his NASCAR Camping World Truck Series debut, Round 3 in the Cars Tour at Greenville Pickens, and Jesse Love, who was back in his super late model at Dell's Raceway Park. So stay tuned for more race face driver updates here on Racing America. Hi, my name is Brody Moore and you're watching Race Face Driver Updates on Racing America. Welcome back. Let's now take a look at the NASCAR Camping World Truck Series race at Martinsville Speedway on Thursday night where Caden Honeycutt made his debut in the number 46 Friends of Jacklin Foundation Solid Rock Carriers Toyota for G2G Racing. The day did not start the way Caden had hoped, when rain canceled both practice and qualifying. So, Caden was forced to take his first lap in a truck under green, and he had to start 33rd. Oh yeah, the Alito Texas driver has never made a green flag pit stop either. Caden worked his way up to 7th with some pit strategy, hanging with the likes of Kyle Busch, but a late race pit stop got them a lap down and an incident ended his day early. Now on to Saturday and round three of the Cars Tour race at Greenville Pickens Speedway where Caden qualified his number 12, Autos by Nelsons, Solid Rock Carriers, Friends of Jacklin Chevrolet in 10th. He ran in the top 10 the entire race but ran out of gas with three laps remaining and finished 21st. Let's check in with Caden for his take on the night's events. Hey everybody, it's Caden Honeycutt here. Just got finished up here at Greenwood Pickens Speedway. Uh, what a rough race. We, uh, we started 10th, made our moves up pretty quickly, and uh, we settled out in 7th for a while. Um, had a couple of restarts, and man, there was just uh, there was a lot of bad calls, a lot of a lot of chaos that went on during that race and unfortunately we ran out of fuel we ran so many daggone pace laps that it just killed us um, both me and bobby actually ran out so um, unfortunately we couldn't get it started with a couple to go but um it's how it rolls you know we're just going to go into goodyear have a better run and uh unfortunately finish 21st but uh we're going to go back to goodyear and uh give redemption tough way to end the night caden will head to goodyear all-american speedway on April 23rd for round four of the Cars Tour. Jesse Love was back in his number 21 super late model for Wimmer Motorsports at Dell's Raceway Park for the Icebreaker 100. But before that, he stopped at Millbridge Speedway, jumped in a micro sprint, and battled with NASCAR stars Kyle Larson and Christopher Bell and race face teammate Sheldon Creed. Check out this video highlight. Buckle those seat belts, hold on tight. Kyle Larson leads him to green. And Kyle Larson will lead him. Excuse me, Jesse Love on the outside will lead Kyle Larson down the back straightaway off turn four. Jesse Love leads lap number one over two lanes, Kyle Larson. Yeah, see the industry's battle, and it's Jesse Love getting the best of Larson there on lap number two. And I tell you who else is dangerous. That 11 of Brent Cruz already up in the third. There's a big slider on Tim Nye, and I will call. I'm not sure how many slide jobs took place in that race, but nice job, Jesse. Jesse came home fourth and Sheldon in fifth. Now we head to the Dells, where Jesse qualified seventh, 
finished fourth in the dash, then brought home a 12th place finish in the main event. We were able to catch up with Jesse right after the race. Hey guys, it's Jesse. Just got done here at Dells Raceway Park. After the invert, we started seventh in the feature and um, started going forward pretty early. Unfortunately, had to go around a wreck that was on the bottom. Got up in the marbles um, and then got a hole in our left rear tire. Progressively going down. Um, we didn't catch it until two cautions after that. It was 30 to go by that point. We came in and pit when the tire was flat and we and we saw what what was happening and uh, only had 35 laps or so to get back to the front. By the time I got back out onto the racetrack after we pit, they were already green and we didn't get a caution after that, just went green the checkered. So definitely frustrating. Um, definitely a, a you know gut and feeling, um, but we'll, we'll stay true to what we're doing and, and the process is right. Just um, one of those racing deals that uh, we can't control. Everything that we could control, we did well. So we'll keep our process the same and uh, head to the next one. That was a tough one. Up next for Jesse, Arca Menard Series at Dover International Speedway on April 29th with new five race sponsor, Yahoo! I always wanted to do that. We're going to take another short commercial break, and when we return, we'll catch up with Casey Klein, who was making his first start at South Sound Speedway in his Pro Late model, and Hudson Bulger, who was at Chris Motorsports Park in his Legend. We'll be right back with more Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. Hi, my name is Jake Wallman, and you're watching Race Face Driver updates on Racing America. Welcome back. Casey Klein was making his debut at South Sound Speedway in Rochester, Washington in his new Pro Late model. Casey qualified third, won his trophy dash, and was lined up for the A main before, you guessed it, the reins moved in and canceled the rest of the night's event. Here's what Casey had to say about the weekend. Hi, I'm Casey Klein. This weekend I was racing at South Sound Speedway in Rochester, Washington. I ended up qualifying third out of eight cars. And after qualifying, we looked at the car and we realized the driveline was bounding up. So we had to get a new driveline or the trophy dash. And in the trophy dash, I won. And as soon as we started lining up for the main events, it started raining a little bit. And so after a couple minutes of waiting, we had to call off the main, but I'd like to thank all my sponsors, Thamer Farms, Sporty Steakhouse, Farmer Bean and Seed, Mountain View Polaris, Klein's Auto Sale, uh, Race Face Advancement, Friends of Jacqueline, and everyone else who helped me get there this weekend. Nothing worse than knowing you have a car capable of winning, getting yourself all psyched up, and not getting the chance to see what you had. That's racing in the Northwest. Up next for Casey, Junior Late Models at Madera Speedway on April 30th. Hudson Bulger was at Chris Motorsports Park in his number 17 Can-Am Byron Power Sports Legend car. Hudson qualified in fourth and brought home another top five finish. We had a chance to get a post-race recap from the driver. So we just finished up a race here at Chris Motorsports Park. Um, it went pretty good. I had a really good qualifying position, qualified fourth. I feel like I could have done a lot better, but I messed up a little bit on my initial restart. But the uh, top five times were just so close that I couldn't really pass. It was very hard to pass. And I ended up finishing fifth. Um, felt like I had a lot better card than that. But anyways, we'll just move on to the next race. Uh, I'd like to thank Can-Am, Byron Power Sports, Chris Delbeck, Brett Reagan, my family, everybody else to make this happen. Up next for Hudson, back to Crisp on April 22nd and 23rd. It's now time for this week's Track Facts with Carter Whalen. Carter Whalen here, and today I'm going to talk to you about MGQMA, North Georgia Quarter Midget Association in Cumming, Georgia. The track is located three miles away from my house. 
so it's an awesome location for us. We get to go and race and practice whenever we want. The track is a 1 20th of a mile banked asphalt oval track. We race quarter midgets on this track on Saturday and Sundays. We have a big race, the Super Regional race. It's part of the national tour coming up on April 2nd. And then part of the regional tour, we have a Dixie Shootout region race on September 17th. I've won multiple races at this track and multiple championships at this track. And that's this week's Track Facts. Carr is currently a quarter midget driver, but I think that pro truck in the background gives us a glimpse into his future. We're headed for our last commercial break, and when we come back, we'll catch up with Raceface Next drivers, Cole Denton, who is trying to keep his winning streak alive at Chris Motorsports Park, and Carter Whalen, who made the trip to North Carolina to prepare for next week's Carolina Clash. So stay tuned for more Race Face Driver updates right here on Racing America. Hey everybody, this is Anthony Alfredo and you're watching Race Face Driver updates here on Racing America. Welcome back. Cole Denton was at Chris Motorsports Park in Cordell, Georgia, where the Bandolero Bandits race with the Bando Outlaws. We caught up with Cole right after this exciting finish. Hey race fans, this is Cole Denton. Today we are at Chris Motorsports Park for race three. I qualified second and on the start I fell back to third and got by for second and then a big wreck happened. The leaders spun and they went up the track, down the track and back up the track. So I was very lucky to avoid it. We went back green. I led the first lap after we went back green and a caution came back out. And when we went green, I got passed for first, but I held on for second, parking by number 46, Idex Bandolera into victory lane because I won the Bandolera Bandit feature, even though I finished second overall. I want to thank my mom and dad, Bacon Racing, my grandparents, Race Face Advancement, Friends of Jacqueline Foundation, and by the way, everyone, today I was singing Slow Ride. Bye, everyone. This kid is amazing. That extends his winning streak to 11 in a row. Up next for Cole, six races in four days, all starting with twins at Highland Rim Speedway in Greenbrier, Tennessee on the 13th, and a single event on the 14th, then on to Nashville Fairground Speedway for two races on the 15th and one on the 16th. Man, my hat is off to the parents. That is a crazy schedule. Carter Whalen was at North Carolina QMA getting in some testing for the upcoming Carolina Clash. Carter did race his new Heavy 160 after totaling the car at North Georgia last week. Let's check in with the driver for a quick post-race recap. Hey everyone, little post-race recap for you. Just got home from North Carolina NCQMA. We ran their pre-clash race. We just ran Heavy 160. We tested all the cars to make sure they were fast. They were. In Heavy 160, we heat raced. I won the heat race. That put us P1 on the A main. And in the A main, in the first couple laps, I made a little mistake and slid back to P5. I battled back to P4, battling with the P3 car for most of the race, but weren't able to get a podium this weekend. Just got P4. So next weekend for the Carolina Clash at NCQMA again, we'll see how we can do. Up next for Carter, North Carolina QMA, April 15th and 16th for the Carolina Clash in Salisbury, North Carolina. Other race face drivers seeing action this weekend include Jade Avedesian, who will compete in her Extreme Outlaw Power Eye Midget at I-55 Raceway in Peebley, Missouri on Saturday. Jake Bowman will be at Highland Rim in his Legend car April 12th through the 14th and then on to Nashville Fairground Speedway on Saturday in his number 25 Rackley War Pro Late Model. And Caden Honeycutt will return to his Dirt Factory stock 
in an attempt to keep his seven race winning streak alive. First stop is Friday night at Heart of Texas Speedway and Kennendale Speedway on Saturday. The Raceface family would like to wish everyone a happy Easter and make sure to take some time and reflect on the true meaning of this holiday. Well, that's it for this week's Raceface Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching. Thank you.